Hi, this is Mitch Amatrudo. I hope that this video will help you to replace the body on your chroma. I know that the camera angles and overall video quality is pretty bad, but I hope that it will still give you an idea of what steps you need to take to repair your chroma. At the time I made this video, there was no other information on the internet about how to do this, so I had to figure all of it out myself. If you have basic mechanical and electronic skills, you can probably do this even without the help of this video because it was pretty easy. My chroma got stuck at the very top of a tree and took an 80-foot fall to the ground after we shook it loose from the tree. As you can see, one of the arms is broken at the end, both the landing gears broke, and there was some damage done to the camera shock mount that is not shown in this video. I taped it back together, put it up on blocks, and tested it to see if it looked like it was worth fixing, and I was very pleased to see that it looked like everything was working as it should. Alright, let's get into it. The first problem you might encounter is ordering the new body shell. The picture on the Horizon Hobby website seems to imply that you are only getting the upper half of the body, when in fact you will receive a complete body shell. I should also mention at this time that it does not appear possible to separate the body into two halves. Even with the six screws removed, the body still wants to stay together, both on the original chroma and on the replacement body. No worries, the job can still be completed with the body remaining together. All right, so let's get into fixing this thing. The first thing we need to do is remove the propellers. You should already be familiar with this procedure and know that two of them are removed counterclockwise and two are turned clockwise to loosen. Next, using a T5 Torx bit, remove the four screws for the wire cover. Next, we will remove the GPS antenna by pushing in on the clip with a small tool to release it from the body. Then turn the chroma over and remove the antenna connector from the main board. Take note of where the black insulator goes, since I didn't, and remove the antenna from the aircraft. Next, disconnect and remove the receiver from the body. Mine was just loose in there. It probably got knocked loose in the crash, so I don't know exactly where it was. Using a tiny Phillips screwdriver, remove the single screw that holds the bezel for the gimbal and USB ports. Carefully pry the bezel free. Using a T8 Torx bit, remove the three screws for the camera mount. At this point in the video, I used a T8 Torx bit to remove the six screws holding the body together. However, you may skip this step because it does not seem necessary. After removing the front wire cover, locate the connector for the gimbal and USB board and disconnect it from the main board. You should now be able to remove that board and harness from the body. With a T5 Torx, remove the two screws that secure the battery terminals. Using a 2.5mm Allen wrench, remove the four screws from each of the motors. To remove the motors from the body, depress the tab on the side of each motor connector at the main board and pull the connector from the board. The motors can now be removed from the body by pulling the wires free from the arms. It is important to note that the Chroma uses two different motors, A and B, and they must be replaced in the same positions that they were removed. We will cover this at the time of reassembly. For now, note that the A or B is engraved at the top of each motor. As with any project like this, take the time to bag and label all of the hardware so that there is no confusion when reassembling. Next is to remove the four LEDs. Unclip them from the ends of the arms 
Disconnect their plastic connectors from the main board and remove them by pulling the wire through the arms. I took note of which LED went to which arm and bagged them separately, but since Horizon offers only one replacement LED, it probably doesn't matter. The next step is to remove the two screws that attach the main board to the body. The main board should now come free of the body with no other connections or screws. Release the two tabs that secure the on-off switch at the top of the chroma to the body and remove the switch. Disassembly should now be complete. To reassemble the chroma, we will try to proceed in reverse order of the disassembly. So start by installing the on-off switch into the new body. It should simply snap into place. Next, slide the main board into the body. The black and white battery cables should be routed below the mounting support, not above it as shown in the video. The board should sit in there without any surprises. In my case, the black power switch on the board did not nest correctly into the white on-off switch that is mounted on the body, so I had to reposition it to get the main board to fit in correctly. At this time, test the operation of the switch to ensure that it is seated correctly and feels like it's functioning normally. Next, install the two screws at the front of the main board. Do not install the two rear screws at this time. Install the four LEDs by feeding the wires through the arms, then snapping the LEDs into place at the end of each arm. Connect all four of the LEDs wires to the main board. I used the forceps, but the tweezer tool that came with the chroma is helpful for grabbing the wires to pull them through the arms and also to remove the connectors from the main board during disassembly. Also remember that all of the connectors on the chroma fit only one way into their sockets, so don't try to force any of them together. If it doesn't feel like it's fitting right, turn it 180 degrees and try again. Next, you will install the four motors, again by feeding the wires through the arms. Remember that there are two A motors and two B motors. Be sure to install them in their correct locations according to the A and B letters at the ends of the arms. Line the motors up correctly and install the four screws for each of them. Plug each of their connectors into the main board. Spin each of the motors to ensure that they were installed correctly and do not bind. Replace the six screws for the body if you have removed them. There is one at each arm and two near the center of the fuselage. Next, we're going to install the gimbal and USB board. Insert the cable into the big hole, then work the circuit board into the opening. I had to install it at an angle to seat the bottom, then move it upright so that the bezel would fit properly, which is then secured with the tiny Phillips screw. Plug the connector into the main board. At this time, you might notice that there remains a ribbon cable that does not seem to have a home. Mine has a small hole on each side of the connector. I also noticed this during disassembly and found it odd that it seemed to be just loose in there. I'm guessing that this is something used at the factory for programming or diagnostics. I have a tech support ticket into Horizon Hobby to try to get a confirmation on this, but 24 hours later, I still have not received a reply. So the next step is to install the GPS antenna. Feed the wire into the hole, snap the antenna back into the body, and make the electrical connection to the main board connector labeled GPS. The radio receiver is next to install. Start by making the electrical connection. Let me say at this time that I found that all of the electrical connections were idiot proof as each component either had its own unique connector or they are all situated in a way that makes it obvious which connector goes where. The only exception to this was that extra connector that I previously mentioned. So back to the radio. Feed the antenna wires loosely into each of the rear arms. Affix the circuit board to the inside of the rear of the chroma. Since mine was loose, I'm not certain that this is the correct location, but there was a curvature to it that seemed to match. You might need to use a new piece of double-sided tape for this. 
Now you can replace the rear wire cover or grill as I call it. Be sure that it fits nicely. I had some trouble with this at first because I had the radio receiver in the wrong location. Secure this with the four screws. <coughs> this is why I said not to install the two rear screws for the main board earlier. Now fold the battery terminal wires over and screw the black support onto the cross member with the two screws. Snap the front wire cover into place by bending it slightly. Be careful, I almost broke mine. The camera mount is next to install with three screws. Next, snap the four lenses into place that cover the LEDs. Snap the two sections of landing gear into the body. Both of mine were broken in the crash, so I had to replace them also. Finally, slide the camera into place. I do not have video of this. Conclusion. It took me four hours to complete this project. Much of that time was spent messing around with video stuff and gathering tools and things. I believe most folks should be able to do this from start to finish in about two hours. I gave the Chroma a test run and it seems to be functioning normally, but I would like to wait until I hear back from Horizon about that extra connector before flying high and far. When I picked this thing up off the ground after it fell from the tree, I thought, that's 1200 bucks I'll never get back. But for $70 or so, I was able to get it back flying again, and for that I'm pretty impressed with the Chroma. Thanks for watching this video and I hope I was able to help others out with some free information. And please feel free to ask any questions.